You Only Live Once is a rule that doesn't apply to the isekai genre, but what are the chances of being reborn and death comes knocking on the door in the form of an elegant tall man? The story plays around the reincarnation of Hanasaki Rinko, who is murdered by an unknown man just before she gets the opportunity to attend university, thus taking us back into an era of horse carriages, portrait paintings, and ballrooms is the story of Rinko who is reborn in a novel as Rayliana McMillan. What is it that Rayliana lacked though? Beauty? Etiquette? Charm? The perfect little yet prestigious family? She had it all. Throughout the show, we also get to see Rayliana express her inner thoughts through her real self, Rinko. However, things get pretty intense when she receives a prediction about her short lifespan in the novel. Turns out that in the novel, Rayliana's character is merely a supporting cast that has to die so the main character comes into light. Being reborn with every detail of your life known to you is quite pleasant, but Rayliana is not about to stand by and watch herself get engaged to the man that will be responsible for her death. In the novel, Francis Brooks, the son of a noble family, poisons Rayliana by lacing her tea with poison every evening. And the reason for this is so he could control her family's business. Well, that's when the unknown heroine comes in to expose the truth, but unfortunately, Rayliana would have been far dead by then. Now living as Rayliana, Rinko refuses another gruesome fate. She is determined to live and takes up the task to make Francis dissolve their engagement by any means possible. She even goes as far as purchasing a book on how to cleanly break up with him. I mean, we all know someone who could use this book. However, her plans of humiliating him at dinner and also shooting at him prove futile. It seems Francis got the idea behind Rayliana's acts. One day, he loses his cool and promises that nothing could stop their wedding, also revealing himself to be the evil stink he is. Just when Rayliana runs out of options, comes the arrival of the main protagonist in the novel, Noah Winnight, charming and daring with a fierce gaze that pierces the soul. Noah is revealed to be a duke, being related to the king, who was his elder brother. In the kingdom of Chamis, the old nobles resented the reign of the new generation of nobles. Determined to pluck them from the roots, the old nobles passed a law to forbid the transfer of noble ranks. Yet, it's suspicious how Noah's arrival to the kingdom aligns with the same period the royal seal to enact the law goes missing. With Rayliana's knowledge of how the book ends, alongside Noah's ranking, then just maybe he could be the solution to her problem. Meanwhile, Francis, who was present at the same party, gets a sudden visit from Jake Langston. Apparently, the mere sight of him frightens Francis, that he pushes Jake to a dark corner to talk privately. Take a wild guess what the subject of the conversation is. Turns out, both of them had some kind of deal and they have Rayliana as the golden prize. After this altercation, Francis is visibly pissed, blaming his fiancée who had completely changed from her shy timid nature to being so audacious. Meanwhile, Rayliana worries about her first words to a stranger she's never met after stalking Noah into the garden. Yet, he breaks the silence first and they exchange pleasantries though she's shocked that Noah is aware of her identity. As planned, she puts forth a deal with something Noah is desperate and peculiar about, the missing royal seal. However, she remains cautious, knowing that behind his calm, gracious appearance lurked evil. For Rayliana was quite aware that any agreement with him would be making a deal with the devil. Just then, Francis approached the scene, marveled at the sight before him. The look on a distraught Rayliana is priceless while she wonders why Francis had to disrupt her plan yet again. There and then, she decides to break her engagement with him by declaring herself in a romantic entanglement with the Duke, also having the royal seal on the line as the item of bargain. The Duke's expression is emotionless, yet he surprisingly pulls Rayliana closer to him as a sign of acceptance. Thankfully, she gets to escape the awkward scene after being summoned home, but a furious Francis refuses to let go of her after experiencing the worst way to be dumped by a girl. Noah comes to her rescue, of course, playing his role perfectly by stopping Francis from harassing Rayliana so she could go home. Afterward, he assigns Witten to investigate Rayliana McMillan and keep a close eye on poor Francis. The next morning, Rayliana experiences a severe hangover after an eventful night. The only reason she jumps out of bed is when she is notified about a visit from the Duke. Soon, word about the Duke's sudden appearance spreads around the McMillan household that even her parents are curious about it. It is then that Rayliana expresses her wish to break off her engagement with Francis, and they humbly accept her decision, claiming not to compromise her happiness for their success. The next day, Rayliana is invited to Noah's mansion where they speak privately. Noah demands to know more about Rayliana's offer, and so, 
she reveals how Noah is the culprit behind the missing royal seal, and also reveals the seal's location. Despite all that, Noah is unfazed, though he doesn't deny Rayliana's accusations. Instead, he declares their meeting a waste of time. Rayliana keeps her composure while she walks out, despite wishing he'd call her back. Just then, she notices the pieces on his chessboard and brilliantly relates them to the situation in the kingdom. Only then does he return her to continue their negotiation. She doesn't reveal the details about her reincarnation. Instead, informs him about a rumor stating that Francis was planning to eliminate her, whereas she sought his help because no one would believe her claim. When he asks how she found out about the seal, she simply states that her source is dead, hence he doesn't need to bother. In the end, he accepts to pose as her fiancé for the duration of six months, but decides not to expose the full package of their deal. Onward, it seems that Rayliana's life is about to get pretty interesting. After finding the shocking news of a scandal with her family against Francis, demanding compensation for the one-sided annulment of the engagement, and in the coming days, has to say goodbye to the residents of the Macmillan house, now that she's meant to move in with the Duke for the purpose of her bridal training to become the wife of a wind knight. Her arrival at the Duke's mansion seemed soothing yet draining. Thanks to the watchful eyes of Adam, her assigned guard, who was always mute, yet consistently watched her like a hawk, and the overly dedicated supervisor and butler in the mansion, Gideon. At the end of the day, Rayliana rants about her exhaustion in her room when she's startled by Noah's unannounced presence. She finds his act worrisome, knowing if he had done that in the real world, he'd be behind bars. However, Noah ignores her futile request of seeking privacy because she was officially his fiance, externally and... <clears throat> uh, internally. As an extension of their deal, he promises to handle the case with the Brooke family while teasing her about her poor taste in men. He also reveals that their deal is known by two other witnesses, Adam and another identity he doesn't give away. Just before he leaves, things get pretty spicy between them. For the purpose of making their little act believable, Noah demands that Rayliana calls him by his first name. His gaze on her face is just the right gesture to get her flustered as she incoherently tries to make out words. Noah, can you please stop this torture? Of course, how vulnerable she became by his presence sends Rayliana raging at her innocent pillows, but gives a warm excitement to Noah, who peeked at her reaction before closing the door. Two weeks quickly pass on since her arrival at the mansion, while also being occupied with the activities of her bridal training. One afternoon, Noah approaches her with a bouquet, requesting her to be his escort at a ball where he announces their engagement. Coming into the story, is it Madame Nick or is it Monsieur Nick? I guess we'll never find out. Nick Maddox, who is referred to as the Magician, is brought in as Rayliana's stylist for the ball. While he works magic on her face and outfit, he gives her friendly tips and the tea about the Wind Knight type of smiles, the ball, and a vicious vixen who will be in attendance. When Rayliana steps out, for the first time we see the mute Adam, dazed and lost for words, literally, by her beauty. The same goes for Noah, who is stunned when his gaze falls on her. However, he merely walks past her without a word. Getting to the venue, he warns her not to leave his side for more than five minutes, but Rayliana is more concerned that for some reason, Noah reinforced his guards from just Adam to a total of five. Their entrance to the ballroom is flooded with nobles who have their eyes and attention on the Duke and his future Duchess. Suddenly, they are approached by Marquise Eritiel, who congratulates their union and also throws compliments about Rayliana's beauty. Noah plays his role a little bit too well, pulling Rayliana towards him and referring to her as his greatest fortune. Is it just me who feels this might be getting too serious for acting? Oh yeah, not to mention revealing his possessive side when gentlemen at the ball approach Rayliana for a dance. They dance the night away while having many conversations in between. Not everyone's an ideal couple, teasing the other by calling themselves out on their pretentious acts. And just then, Rayliana slips but is caught by Noah, ending the dance with a pose I like to call the flamingo style. While the ball commences, Rayliana keeps getting the feeling that she was being watched. No later comes the arrival of Vivian Shamel, the novel's villain and the vicious vixen Nick referred to in his story. In the novel, Vivian tried everything in her power to gain the affection of Noah, but ended up being ignored by him. With her heart broken, she accepts a marriage proposal from the king and is undergoing bridal training to become the queen. However, that doesn't stop her from manipulating the relationship between Noah and the main character of the novel, Beatrice. Well, now that Rayliana is engaged to Noah, the thought of having Vivian as a nemesis frightens her. Not gonna lie, looking at Vivian's character is a bit scary, and she shares a striking resemblance with Black Clover's Mary Leona Vermillion. 
Just then, Noah interrupts Reliana's attempt to hide, seeking help with Freeze Eritiel, the wife of Barakis Eritiel. In the kingdom, there's a group of high nobles' wives where every discussion that goes on in the group affects the kingdom's affairs. And Noah needs Reliana to get an invitation into the group from Freeze. Just when Reliana is on the verge of carrying out her plan with Freeze, she's interrupted by Vivian, who throws subtle demeaning comments at her, and Reliana doesn't fail to give her the heat. You could literally see Vivian boiling. And as if that's not enough, Nick arrives to spite her even more. Reliana thanks Nick with a gesture and retreats to clean up with Freeze while having a female guard Ansley to watch. With a few sparkles, soft smiles, and manipulation, of course, Reliana gets Freeze to invite her into the group for noble women. Unfortunately, the moment they're about to return to the ballroom, they are suddenly attacked with a smokescreen, and an unconscious Reliana is abducted and taken into the forest. Who could be responsible for the abduction? Was it an enemy of Noah, or a case of mistaken identity? Find out in the next recap.